There are two things that we can consider associated with most of the Vanguard band lists over the years and one of them is being not so useful EMOTIONAL DAMAGE or unexpected as sometimes the band list hit at the weirdest place which doesn't affect the format at all or it does hit a certain deck that it's not even in the meta at all but they decided to hit it anyway and one of those cases that i think we have with a recent bad list based on the day i recorded this i will leave the date up somewhere so you guys know which day i'm talking about is the standard first restriction list and in my honest opinion it does help like just a little bit but i think it's mostly pretty damn useless as standard is already such a balanced format where a lot of decks are already at a similar power level with exception of a very few i mean i make a whole tier list video talking about it and yeah i think this particular first band list is pretty damn useless and i'll be explaining exactly why they are pretty useless to begin with so please watch this video until the end before start making a comments because i think this is something that i need you guys to actually carefully watch before you start to make a comment about it and yeah i mean if you enjoy this kind of content consider like share and subscribe so consider ring the bell if you want to keep up with the notification of my channel and without further ado let's get into it so let's start off with cater restriction list which is a little bit more relevant for english player now also as they only restrict duster and dragon to one copy so for those who don't know what duster and dragon does essentially it gives all grade 3 ability to boost at the cost of soul blast 2 and as much as Dark Strand Dragon is such a important staple in Bastion deck for the longest time, recently they did receive a new support which essentially just invalidate everything in the form of a set order Pride to Protect, which does exactly the same thing as Dark Strain, but at the cost of one discard. But the difference is that Pride to Protect actually lasts for the whole game as long as the set order is safe from protection. And as of now, there is no way to destroy a set order by any card effects no no he's got a point so more or less pride to protect seems to be a better option to go into for most of the bastion build and let's be real there is a lot more unit in bastion deck now and some of them use more souls to give bastion better advantage also depend on matchup a lot of bastion player prefer to go offensive early as bastion allows the player to actually rush as early as turn 3 and essentially just force the opponent to have less card in their hand which lead to less response and also which means that during the bastion prime turn is a little bit easier to push for the end game now let's move on to what kind of sparked me to make this video a choice restriction in the story Kaya nation between magnolia elder and inlet pulse dragon so why these two cards specifically first we need to look at each of them separately to understand why these two cards work so well together starting off with elder elder is a huge improvement from the original magnolia as not only it gets triple drive, it has ability to superior call one unit from its soul and ability to just enable six attack as long as you meet the condition and also give the power and ability to intercept from back row, which essentially just make Elder such a powerful jack of all trade and in my opinion a very powerful upgrade to Magnolia. Now let's look into Inlet Pulse Dragon. I'm just gonna ignore its restun skill as that is restricted to Flagberg Dragon. But look at the other skill which is when at the end of turn, if you attack 4 or more times this turn, put this unit into your soul and draw a card. The fact that this ability is not restricted to any right line is actually very powerful toolbox for a lot of Stoikia deck that is capable of hitting more than 3 times per turn. Which includes Flagberg Dragon itself, Roroa and Magnolia. But wait! There's more! And with Magnolia Elder, Inlet essentially turned into an infinite resource generator. You see, its ability to just draw one and go back into soul kind of works with the Elder ability to just call one unit from soul when he is placed onto the Vanguard Circle. Synergy. And this is most probably the reason why they make the choice restriction appear in the first place. It's essentially just prevent Magnolia from having an infinite resource. And in my honest opinion, it is still a very effective ban list. So, why am I still consider this particular ban list to be useless? Well, as one dragon leaps the scene, another one joins in in the form of clapping dragon and line on support in general. Yes, I'm aware that the line on support is not in for English players at least for a month or two, but in general, line on support has such a heavy compatibility with Magnolia Elder itself. Okay, so from this part onward, I'll be covering some of the new cards that is released in the BTO6 and the uh, new trial deck in general. So if you are English 
player and you do not want to be spoiled by the brand new Japanese card, consider yourself one. Linon has a very interesting support in the sense that it has a focus on making sure that you have the entire back row full and take advantage from its life. For example, with the Linon with ability to just boot with every single rare card in your back row or as I mentioned earlier, clapping dragon with ability to gain power and draw as long as you have a full back row. This is very easy to take advantage of and for a lot of decks, it is easy to pull off, especially Elder where Elder does encourage the player to have a full fill to get the 6 attack off very easily. So even though Magnolia lost its infinite resource in the form of Inlet Pulse, the Stoic KR support does have enough card pool to actually also offset the problem very easily as you have things like Clapping Dragon which makes things a lot more aggressive while still gaining a draw spec. You do have Transcendent Soul Slice Dragon which does give you a soul and a target for Magnolia to ride into as well as a Counter Charge. So in general, I think Stoic Kaya has evolved into such a versatile nation that Magnolia doesn't really lose too much even if the restriction lead is in its effect. It's just that its most powerful resource is kind of got blocked. In conclusion, the card pool of both Kaitos Tanctuary and Stokia has grew so large that it kind of offset the restriction list in general and that's why I call it kind of useless as as they restrict something, they literally just have something else that can kind of replace it almost immediately. Yes, it's not a perfect fit but it still get the job done very very well. But what do you guys think? This is just an opinion from a casual. So do leave down in the comments below of what you guys think of the restriction list in itself. And yeah, that's all I have for today. Take care of yourself and this is Mac Megane signing out.